Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today we're going to be looking at an old deck, but one which is really good and nobody talks about as much as they should, and given that we've done videos recently about Yuxi, Azav, and Mesprit that are going to be coming out in the near future, I thought it would be fun to look at the only deck that these three have ever really contributed, AMU. This was all around in the Diamond and Pearl era, and it really revolved around three level Xs. Now, for those of you that weren't playing at the time, level Xs were cards that you put on top of an existing card, kind of like a break, and then you got all of the attacks, etc., of the card underneath it, while getting extra HP, attacks, and all of that good stuff. The two main differences from breaks were that, first of all, you could only level X if you were in the active. Wasn't like breaks where you could just go ahead and evolve whenever you liked. You had to be in the active. And also, it was the same name. So Yuxi Level X and Yuxi are both Yuxi cards. You don't get to have four of each. It's four in combination, which made the lines people played with their Level Xs far more interesting and a bit more difficult to figure out. So, if we start off with Uxi Level X, it really was the ability here, or poker power as it was back then, trade-off. Once during your turn, you can look at the top two cards of your deck, put one in your hand, and put the other one on the bottom of your deck. This saw a huge amount of play, not just in AMU, but in pretty much every deck at the time, it was over-the-top phenomenal. Now, the main attacker in the deck was Mesprit Level X. Mesprit Level X... 2 Psychic Energy, 200 damage, but you've got to have Yuxi Level X and Azalf Level X in play, and then you discard all the energy. So you sit there and you do a whopping amount of damage, and that was awesome. You could get rid of anything on your opponent's side of the field. And you could also remove 3 damage counters for 0 energy if you were into that. And that's from all of your bench Pokemon. And then we have Azalf Level X, which was kind of cool because the Poker Body ability removed weakness from all of your Pokemon. That was pretty sweet. I should say all of your Psychic Pokemon, but this was a deck that only played Psychic Pokemon, so you're good. The attack, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon, put one damage counter on that Pokemon for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Sometimes that would be useful, but it really was a now and then kind of attack. Now, in terms of the non-level Xs, Yuxi, a lot of you will be familiar with, even if you didn't play back then. Set up. Just draw until you've got seven cards. Like a shame in EX, but you get to draw an extra card, and it only gives up one prize. It really was ridiculous. Psychic Restore, 20 damage, and you get to take all cards and Uxie, put it on the bottom of your deck. That's fine. I should, while I'm here, mention Uxy Level X's attack, which wasn't terrible. 60 damage for 2 energy, and then you can't use Zen Blade during your next turn. Against things like, I don't know, opposing Uxy Level X's, which were everywhere, this would get a fairly easy one-hit KO. And remember, you didn't have weakness even though your opponent did. And then we see Mesprit, which was another card that was very, very widely played for the ability Poker Power Psychic Bind. When you put Mesprit onto your bench, your opponent does not get Poker Powers during their next turn. That was absolutely brilliant. Lots of decks used Poker Powers at the time. That was brilliant. And then 2 energy, 20 damage. If you've got the same number of cards in hand as your opponent, you do 70. And then, if we have a quick look at Azav, which again saw a huge amount of play, Time Walk, you basically put Azav on the bench, and then you can take a Pokemon from your prizes, put it into your hand, and take a card from your hand, put it into your prizes. You didn't shuffle up your prizes, so that meant you knew what prizes were where, so you could choose them, and it also meant you could take these Pokemon out of your prizes, because you might be playing a free one regular level X line, for instance, and you need that level X. 
So we have a range of attacks here. Mesprit level X is your big bad I can KO everything kind of attack. But then, you know, Uxy level X can do 60. That's not too bad. Mesprit does 70 if you can match the number of cards that you and your opponent have in hand. Not absolutely terrible. I should also mention Azalf's attack quickly. 20 damage, stops retreat. Again, against free retreaters, this could be kind of good here and there. Now, we've looked at the Lake Trio from Legends Awakened, but the Azal from Mysterious Treasures did see a little bit of play as well. The poker power here, if you've got Uxi and Mesprit in play, which you will, that's kind of the point of the deck, the attack cost of each of your opponent's basic attacks is one colourless energy more, though this does not stack. When you're up against all of these SP Pokemon that were big at the time, like Garchomp C level X, like Luxray GL level X for instance, this was actually really quite a good poker body, and you can see why people would play it. Uxi and Mesprit really were just a Legends Awakened, but Mesprit you did see a little bit of a mixture there. Now, in terms of other Pokemon that saw play, Mewtwo did see a bit of play, mostly for the level X. The level X had a brilliant Pokebody Psy Barrier, which prevented all effective attacks, including damage, done to Mewtwo by unevolved Pokemon. This really was there for SP decks. It was very much an SP counter. Now, we do need to mention Dialga G level X here, which of course had a poker body which removed everyone else's poker bodies, including Mewtwo's, but if they didn't play a Dialga, this was actually a really, really useful Pokemon that did see a whole bunch of play. Now, in terms of attacks on this Mewtwo level X, you did 120 but discarded all your energy. So you would use a Mewtwo from Majestic Dawn for zero energy to attach up to two energy to Mewtwo. And then either that turn or the next, because you're only attacking every other turn here, you can just attach an energy from hand, and you're doing 120 every other turn. And when Pokemon like Garchomp C are ruling the format, 120 is enough to KO a lot of Pokemon. We also did see Unon G see quite a lot of play here, because it's got the guard poker power. You can attach Unon G as a Pokemon tool to one of your Pokemon, and it makes it immune to any effects of attacks other than damage. This was really big with Machamp running around, because Machamp's takeout for a single energy got an instant one-hit KO on basic Pokemon, or unevolved Pokemon, which even the level X's were. Level X's were still basic Pokemon, they were not evolutions, you were just leveling up your basic Pokemon. And the other Pokemon that saw a fair amount of play here was Palkia Level X. That's right, we're introducing a fourth basic Level X. But the regular Palkia here really isn't important. It is the poker power restructure that we like. Basically, you may have your opponent switch one of your active Pokemon with one of your bench, and then you switch one of the defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's benched. So you both get to switch each other's bench with our active. Now for you, you can bring up whatever you want to KO. For your opponent, they've basically got to pull up either your Yuxi, which is fine because you want to level exit, your Azalf, which is fine because you want to level exit, or your Mesprit, which is fine because you want to level exit. You need lots of level X's, this was a great way to do it. Plus, we've seen that although Mesprit level X can do a huge amount of damage, a lot of your other attacks are quite low hitting, so being able to pull your opponent's Uxie from the bench into the active to get a cheeky KO really was quite fun indeed. And I should mention at this stage, one of the great things about this deck, you didn't need to play support Pokemon. Uxie and Azalf were very commonly played support Pokemon, but they were integral parts of your deck anyway. Yay! Now, in terms of some of the main trainers, we see Snowpoint Temple here. Snowpoint Temple was a great little stadium that just gave your basic Pokemon an extra 20 HP. Given that your entire deck was made of basic Pokemon, that sounded pretty good to me. We also saw Level Max, and really, Level Max, when it was released was one of the things that made this deck far, 
far better. Because as I've said on a couple of occasions in this video, you need to level X many Pokemon. Level max, flip a coin, if heads, you get to level X a Pokemon, even if they're on the bench. Yes, it's a flippy card, but it's such a good flippy card on a deck that relies so heavily on level Xs, we're willing to let it go. We also see Premier Ball here, which is a fun little card which allows you to search your deck or your discard pile, which is really cool, for a Pokemon level X. Why is that good? Because this is a deck that super relies on level Xs, so being able to search them out easily was nice. We saw Pokemon Rescue, which is obviously quite important because you need to be getting these Pokemon back. And I should give a shout out here to Time Space Distortion. Now, firstly, this was a super rare card which had the Lake Trio on, which made it thematically nice for this deck. But it also allowed you to flip three coins for each head, search your discard pile for a Pokemon, put it into your hand. This was a deck that played two, two lines of a bunch of level Xs. You would frequently need to be recovering Pokemon, so something like Time Space Distortion really was good. And the final trainer card to mention in this video was Energy Pickup, another flippy card with adorable artwork that was actually really, really useful. Flip a coin, if head, search your discard pile for a basic energy card and attach it to one of your Pokemon. Remember, Mesprit hits 200, discards two energy. If you don't have any energy acceleration, you're waiting another turn to use it. Energy pickup allowed you to use this two turns in a row or just get one of your other Pokemon rolling because they're all basic. The reason this deck was never utterly amazing was purely because it was not quite consistent enough, to be perfectly honest with you. Lots of level Xs, lots of discarding energy and having to get it back again, and it, it never quite set up brilliantly for tournament after tournament. It was, to be blunt, not as consistent as it could have been, but I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it was an awful lot of fun. And it's a deck that deserves to be remembered, and that's where this video comes in. But as always, I want to hear from you guys. Do you remember this deck? Did you play it back in the day? Has this inspired you to go back and look at it? Either way, go and have a gander. I think it's an awful lot of fun. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.